All right, market update here on the 23rd. Uh, Tesla up big after hours on their earnings. They weren't like a top line beat, but I think there was some sneaky stuff in there that was actually pretty good. And um, they had pretty good guidance. So the stock's up to 162.35 after hours. I personally thought it was going to go down just because I saw this as an ABC move. But that just goes to show you how unpredictable the stock is. Um, this ends up being a five wave move. We didn't hit the 1.61 fib. The fourth wave came almost back into the first wave. And if this sticks tomorrow, let's just, we'll put that as a uh, asterisk. It has to stick tomorrow. We have to open up here, up here to 162. Then that should invalidate all of these pretty much. I had the third wave right here at 160.74. This would be, um, if it was a fourth wave, it'd be crossing into uh, the third wave, which is kind of odd. And if it gets back in here to 163.41, then that invalidates this as a first wave. So I think that the downtrend is finished. And so we'll see where it opens up at. Here's the zones you want to watch. I already erased the other smaller demand zones, our supply zones. You want to be watching, of course, um, we have a smaller four-hour supply zone right here with a gap fill. That starts right where we're at right now, 161 to 169. And then you got the weekly supply zone right here at 167 to 179. So I would expect, I would expect it probably to hit this zone and then come out. I'd be very surprised if we just blow right through 180, basically. Yeah, 179 is the top of that zone. I'd be very surprised with the weekly demand zone or supply zone. So I'm looking basically at this being the five, fifth wave right here tomorrow. If I was projecting it, I would say we're probably going to retrace. And then that's going to give you give the Bears um, their chance to short and get confident again and then rip. Um, I don't know. I don't think it will get all the way up to here right away. Let's just see. We open up tomorrow at 162. Let's just say 178. Pull back. You're probably looking at something in this zone right here around 200. So if that's the case, I'd be looking for somewhere around 200 pretty quickly, maybe in the next like month or two, something like that. And then I'd be looking for a pullback. And where I'm ultimately looking at before there's actually a real pullback, if this is the start of the, the new uh, trend up, is this monthly supply zone here at 227 all the way up here to 267. So I don't know which one's going to play out. This is a very nice start, though. If we're going to make a wave three, if we're going to do this or this, we can also do this. So if we're going to make an ABC move like that, or we're going to make a wave three, this is a very nice start. 140 to 163 after earnings within two days. That's a nice impulse start. Um, the third option is this. Something like that, maybe into um, August, around the robo taxi stuff, or maybe October. And after that, we would drop down here to 70. So it would look like. Kind of like that. Those are the three options I see. On this one, you would drop down after this. On this one, you would just be going to new highs, and then we would correct it for that. So basically, all of these are saying 220 to 260 if this is the start of the new uptrend. We do need to open up higher tomorrow, but I think that's probably going to happen. But I'd be watching this weekly supply zone right here that starts between 167.70 to 179.28 as a likely first wave um, top and pullback. I mean, I'm saying this as, as a projection. Obviously, you go back to 
this right here, we went from January 3rd to February 6th from 100 to 215. There's always a possibility that this just this just rises like crazy and goes up like who knows, goes straight to 200 or something like that. That's always possible. Um so that's that's another reason why when I sold covered calls today, I sold them above my cost basis because you don't know if this stock sometimes it can just take off. So if we do get a crazy move like that, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's Tesla. Looks like a five wave move to at least this um, gap fill at 161. And you have that weekly supply zone there too. If you break through that, the next weekly supply is 192 to 206. Um, let's look at moving averages real quick and just see where the moving averages are. That's also important. So the 20 on the weekly is up here at 198. Let me add the 200 on here. <clears throat> and another thing you could have looked at too today was looking at the RSI. The RSI was at historical oversold levels. And so that was another clue that we were probably gonna go higher. Um, but, um, so we have all the moving averages up here around 200 bucks. We haven't touched them in a long time. So we're probably, we could make short, um, could go there in short order. So right here, we crossed the 20. And the 20 is right here. So you might see something up here to 200 quickly. So we'll see what happens um, over the next couple of days on the daily time frame. The moving averages are right around here. So maybe we'll get that stop around the 20 and the 50. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we close above the 20 tomorrow. But again, I'm expecting this move tomorrow is going to be the fifth wave of wave one. So it's possible we don't get above this 20 day here at 165 and we pull back. It would be very bullish if we did get and finish above 165 because then we can move up here to the 50 and we would probably um, have a better chance of getting above the 50 in the next couple of days. So that's pretty much it. Whenever you get this low or this far below the 20 on any of the time frames, you're probably going to get a retrace no matter what. And that's kind of what happened today. So let's go on to SPX. SPX is making a five wave move. So that's bullish, at least short term. Um, you have pretty clearly uh, five waves. So that automatically disqualifies my last video where I talked about a fourth wave and one more move lower. I said this could be a C wave too, and that's exactly what it was, an extended C wave in my opinion, because you're getting a five wave move from 493, 495.3 to 5071 basically. And so you've already retraced past the 0.38 fib and you did a five wave move. So we should get at least something like this. Um, it's possible that you got, if you get this, but this is very unlikely, very unlikely. I would say we are heading up here to this zone right here, actually 5171. Let's just see. This comes pretty close. Tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised there's a little bit more upside so we can get the 1.61 fib up here to this box at 5171 to 5211. That is a daily supply zone or a four hour, one of the two. I think it's four hour um, supply zone right there. That's where I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking maybe early May. So. Maybe something like that. And then I'm looking for potentially that. Or who knows? This was an ABC move. If this invalidates it, we could be starting the next leg up. Maybe this won't even happen. So this could end up going 
and just go to new highs too. I don't think that's going to happen. I do think there's going to be another pullback, but it doesn't have to. So look for uh, maybe a little bit higher and then a pullback maybe going into the rest of the week. And right now it looks to me like an impulse move. So uh, QQQ, we are in a supply zone right here. Didn't really follow QQQ that much today, but again, it just looks like a five wave move to me. So we are five, did five waves into supply. So I would expect some kind of pullback here. We've gone from 413 all the way to 425. I don't think that that's a fourth wave either. But we'll see. Um, I'd be looking down here now at this area right here. For a pullback, we pull back, we're looking at 417 to 419. And uh, I'd be looking for probably something like this. Or, again, if it's an extended C wave and we're ready to go, new highs. I don't think we're ready to go, though. I think you're probably going to see a pullback and then a move higher. And then you're probably going to see something down here to 402 to 407, maybe into like middle to late May, something like that. So QQQ looks good, though. We'll see if we can get through this zone that ends at 427. But if not, I would see a, say a pullback here to 417 to 419. Um, Microsoft, same uh, chart as the rest of them. But I'm projecting this to be a five-wave move. So it just cannot go into basically 418. So maybe something like that, and then it sells off. And Microsoft has earnings, I think, tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Right now, clear five-wave move, though. It's starting to do a five-wave move. Um, this just needs to go up tomorrow a little bit more. That will be the fifth wave. You can see here. Yeah, five waves. So let's go over BA. So last video, I said I'm looking for 145, and it would be a buy. Um, it's still chopping around. Pretty much exactly what I expected. Uh, I'm looking for, at this as being a uh, third wave still. So we're still in a third wave. This is a, that's why it's chopping. It's a fourth wave of this third wave. And then you're just looking at it like this. 145. 145, it's a buy, and I'd be looking back up here to 196 to 203. Apple, and I'm going to go over the dollar in a second. The dollar is very important because it's going to tell us a lot. Uh, Apple, I think it's the same thing. I think it's in a fourth wave. And I think this can come down here to 158 at some point. Fill the gap. Um, but I really would not want this to break into the first wave. So I don't want to see it break into 156. Because then that ruins the whole move. Um, but let's see here. This took seven months. So this really is not a five-way move, actually. This is actually an ABC move, so it doesn't really matter. It can come down here to the first wave. I think it's probably going down to here. And at this point, for how long it's taken, this has got to be a B, C, or an ending diagonal. It could be an ending diagonal as well. Could be looking at, whoops. So 
something like that. Because I have this as wave three, wave four, and then this looked like it's five waves. I guess it could be five waves too, and I just missed it. But if you look at this on the daily, like I don't see, I guess this only took about a month. There might be five waves in here too, and I guess you can just look at it like this instead of being a diagonal. Um, the 0.5 fib is at. 160 so if you come down here and fill the gap at 158 that's a buy in my opinion you buy there you're looking at pretty good gains because then you're looking at this going all the way up to 242 pull back and then another move higher after that let's go over the dollar the dollar is coming down so Again, this is a line in the, stand, the sand right here, 107.37. I have it already drawn up here. These are the two possibilities. This right here, if this breaks back into 104.98, then I'm favoring the downside then. I'm favoring this down here. If it breaks up from here and breaks above this, then I'm favoring this. Doesn't really matter. The B wave is either here or it's here. Take your pick. And this is the, what you're looking at, 107.36. Either way, um, this one would come down probably to 96. This one can go all the way down to 92. So the dollar looks bearish to me now. But we'll see. 107.34 is the level to watch. Um... I didn't really watch the rest of the stocks today. I'll go over to video real quick. I know Meta has earnings this week. I can go over that tomorrow. Um, the video is finally popping again. It has not invalidated this move. So. This is potentially a five-way move, but again, we did pop a lot here. And so this could be ABC as well. You got to watch out. This could be one, two, three, four, and five like that because we did hit the 1.61 fib, I think. We came close. We broke the parallel line though. So this could be ABC as well. If it's ABC, then you're looking at this like, oh, look at that. We hit the 1.61 fib of this. So A, this could be doing a, that's interesting. It could be doing this. And then coming down here. So we might be looking at something like this with more downside. Um, this is not a bullish structure right here. Not from what I see. You go to the daily time frame. You can see clearly this is an ABC move. Um, I would say that's more than likely not a bullish structure to go straight up now. I think it's more likely it comes back up into here and then comes down one more time. You have this big zone right here at seven or 691. So I would not be surprised if we came up here and then ended up coming down here like that. So it looks pretty bullish though, short term, which kind of fits in with the timeline. Um, this could be starting five waves up here like this. So that's pretty much it. Tesla, I'm going to look at it one more time. Tesla looks good as long as it can hold its uh, gains tomorrow. Where is it at? I guess it closed. So as long as it holds its gains and breaks into 162 to 163, I think we're headed up. And I'd be looking for a minimum of 227 to 263 over the next six months. So that's pretty much it for this video. 
leave me a comment, like, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll put out some other videos here soon. Have a good night.